not a lot of note happens in Vikanze. It's just another windswept village on the North Sea coast of Holland that comes to life only for the brief summer season. So just under 10 years ago, the municipal authorities were a bit perplexed about what to do when local GP Arnold van Oudvost came and reported to them that he'd killed a patient. The prosecutor said, of course, this is, uh, in legal way spoken, this is murder. So we look in your files and we'll see if we prosecute you, yes or no. It was Vikanze's first notified case of euthanasia, but it was dealt with without the sort of public outcry you'd expect in, say, an Australian seaside resort. And a few weeks later, were very horrible weeks, I got a letter and, with, again, thanks for the admitting and everything was uh, done as it should be done. And uh, it was very... They told me it was done very well, so they won't uh, prosecute me for murder. No further action? No further action. Great relief. Yeah, but I have a record. Um, a criminal record is called? Yeah, I have a criminal record. This is George van Lauk, 56 years old and very recently a widower. Twelve weeks ago, he sat at his wife's bedside and watched her die when Dr. van Oudvorst gave her a lethal injection. This is my uh, third day on the water. I like it still. I can almost sail a little bit. George has always wanted to learn to sail. Now it's a way of helping to cope with having lost his wife, Henny, after 30 happy years. I can relax my mind. And that's good. Yes, that's good. It's not that I forget or I don't want to remember, but I can relax a little more. That's good. That's good. As a person, um, it's going, yeah, how to say, um, it is like going through hell. I think it is, it is, uh, you know uh, Henny will die, you know the, the patient will die. Uh, what you do, do, you do, she will die. Um, but it, it is your hand which makes it quicker. But on the other hand, it is your hand who uh, helps the person die in a uh, soft, nice way, not with suffering. And it's about two middelen, a sleep middel and a dodelijk middel. But when Toen was ze nog aan het lachen. Ze lachte echt hard op, lachte ze. En toen ging de slaapmiddel erin. En in één keer, de lach was stil. De, de kleur uit het gezicht was weg. En haar mond viel open. Dat was het. The stories of Dr. Van Oudvorst and of George Van Lauk would provoke outrage and controversy in most societies. In the Netherlands, they no longer provoke even a raised eyebrow. On average, every day in Holland, at least 10 terminally ill people die by euthanasia with the assistance of a doctor. And it's legal. You can imagine people looking at the Netherlands and reacting with horror, saying, well, you have a society here where, uh, people, where the society is actually helping people to commit suicide. Uh, that in other countries is the same, but they don't talk about it, and we talk about it. And that's the difference between other countries, in my opinion, that we talk on every corner of the street about these issues. The Dutch do talk these issues through and manage to reach consensus on a remarkable range of topics that seem to elude so many other nations. So when some 25 years ago, doctors started to publicly admit they were helping their patients to die rather than face unbearable suffering, 
there was no great demand to lock them up. There's a Dutch word, gedogen, which broadly translated means tolerance of attitudes and ways of behavior which are not necessarily condoned politically or legally. Gedogen belight is a policy of tolerance, live and let live. And that's allowed euthanasia to gradually filter its way up through Dutch society until it's gained broad support amongst the community. Until eventually, the politicians have had the courage to legalize it. And it's Hadoken that seems to keep Holland at the cutting edge of liberal social reform. Take Amsterdam's coffee shops. At the Damkring, you can openly buy a range of hashish and cannabis to smoke here or take away, and yet it remains technically illegal to sell such drugs in Holland. It's not legal, it's not illegal, it is uh, gedogen. Uh, there is a law that says you cannot sell uh, drugs, but... Uh, Eric Bortsman has been openly selling a big selection of dope at the Dampring coffee shop for eight years and never been busted. Why? Because the community doesn't think it's damaging society, so the police don't see a need to act. And what's more, it's good business. And when this became, uh, let's say, bigger, then the police started thinking, well, hey, we have to do something here. And I don't think it was uh, because there was lots of trouble, but I think it was uh, an economic uh, thought. People are making money and we're not. Let's uh, get in there and uh, bring the tax people and see how we can get some uh, money as well. And I think that's the reason why they uh, started making rules in the 1980s. As for the doomsayers who predicted such tolerance would inevitably lead to a tidal wave of hard drug addiction, they've been proved wrong. Holland has the lowest heroin addiction rate of any developed nation. And as for why the Dutch seem so comfortable with Hadoken, this grey area between legal and illegal, there are almost as many opinions about its history as there are people in Holland. In the 16th and 17th century, uh, when uh, the Dutch, uh, let's say, uh, open up the cities for refugees, uh, political refugees or religious refugees, from these days on, they wanted to have these people here because they want to make money. And the, the Dutch are real merchants, and I think that was the, the beginning of uh, gedogen. I mean, they want to do business, they want to have your business, and they don't mind if you're uh, from the Islam or if you're Christian or um, just bring your business to our country, and we're happy with that. The Dutch were amongst those who enthusiastically led the social and sexual revolutions of the 1950s and 60s, with early widespread acceptance of abortion, the contraceptive pill, and legalization of the sex industry. Today it's not locals, but tourists who frequent Amsterdam's red light district, fascinated by such an open, crime-free, and socially tolerated display of human sexuality. with human sexuality, so with human mortality. The Dutch first confronted the issue of euthanasia 200 years ago. In Amsterdam there was a person who killed his wife on her request and that was the first time that it came to court and the judge said it is not good what he did but understandable. His wife was uh, suffering so much that so he, he put a cushion on her head and she died.